Since 1995, over 26,000 international students from all walks of life join the British investigators' training courses in anomalous phenomena within ufology, paranormal and supernatural, parapsychological study, anomalous phenomena, science, hypnotherapy, spiritualism, astrology, astronomy, cryptozoology and many other areas. Our certified self-study courses will teach you how to assess, analyze, engage, formulate, document and be cognizant of all types of phenomena. Suitable for light workers and star seeds, curious personalities and inquisitive minds, skeptics alike and truth seekers. Animal experts say could be the beast of Bodmin Moor. The pictures from tonight's close-up program have been identified by London Zoo as almost certainly a black panther. It may be responsible for an attack on a woman and the ferocious killing of livestock. After this report, we'll be giving out a phone number for people who've seen the beast to call. Some of these pictures are disturbing. Have a, have a look at Recently, there's been a spate of savage attacks on farmers' animals around Bodmin Moor. Dozens of sheep have been killed in a peculiar way, which farmers and experts say could not have been dogs. Other animals as big as calves have also been attacked and the carcasses completely stripped of meat. Obviously, there was a ferocious predator at work. Rosemary Rhodes, who farms near Bolvento, was losing sheep about the same time as she and others had seen a huge black cat. She bought a video camera and within two hours had captured this extraordinary footage. We saw it coming down the field beside the gully and I thought, no, that, that is a big one. And then when it went across uh, uh, some tracks that a tractor had made earlier in the day in the grass, then we realised how, how long it was. And that was how long? About four foot, I would say. We showed the video to London Zoo's big cat expert, Douglas Richardson. He looks into many reports of unusual animal sightings, most of which turn out to be dogs. But he believes our pictures show a large feline, not a domestic cat. I mean, the body shape, the, um, the scale of the length of the tail to the body, I mean, it, all, it looks very good. Um, obviously, the colour of the animal would correspond with a black leopard. The way it's moving, I mean, everything about it certainly gives very strong indications towards this animal being a black leopard. Mark Chandler, who looks after the big cats at Dartmoor Wildlife Park, has also seen the video. He too is convinced it's a big cat, but a puma, not a leopard. I think it's a female puma, not a male, because it's not very stocky, it's more promises build. And um, also, the size of the cat, you get a good comparison as in Rosemary's video, she has those tractor marks running through the field. Now, uh, it takes a, quite a large cat to fill the gap between the two front wheels or the two rear wheels of a tractor. So uh, I'm 100% I'm sort of sure that that's a puma. This coincides with the horrifying experience of Jane Fuller. In the middle of a moonlit night, she decided to take her dog, Lucky, for a walk on Bodmin Moor. What happened to her would make tales of beasts that roam the hills seem frighteningly real. Without a warning sound, she was hit on the back of the neck and knocked out cold. When I came to, Lucky was still lying by the side of me with her paw on my back and she was growling. And um, I got to my knees and as I turned round, because it was quite a full moon that, that evening, I looked up and on the embankment was a huge black cat and uh, it was sort of stalking us. The police now accept absolutely that there are big cats on the moors. Dog handler PC Peter Keane saw one when he went to visit the farm where the BBC pictures were shot. When we first saw this footage, we were impressed but sceptical. However, the more we look at it, the more convincing it appears. Even to layman, this animal seems quite out of the ordinary. It has an unusually long and active tail, almost as if it's got a life of its own. And even from several hundred yards, it seems abnormally big. Remember, those tractor marks down the field are nearly five feet apart, virtually the length of the animal. Whatever it is, that's no ordinary cat. Phil Fairclough, and there's more on tonight's close-up, Search for the Beast, which is at 7.20, 10 minutes earlier than usual on BBC Two. You can have your say too on its 8 o'clock news. The number to call is 0752. 269 viewers may find disturbing Phil Fairclough reports on the mystery of the moors
In the middle of a moonlit night, Jane Fuller decided to take her dog for a walk on Bodmin Moor. What happened to her would make tales of legendary beasts that roam the hills suddenly seem frighteningly real. Half an hour into the walk with her dog Lucky, without a warning sound, Jane was suddenly hit on the back of the neck and fell to the ground unconscious. When I came to, Lucky was still lying by the side of me with her paw on my back and she was growling. And um, I got to my knees and as I turned round, because it was quite a full moon that, that evening, I looked up and on the embankment was a huge black cat and it had a long tail. Its hind regions were much bigger than the, the front regions and uh, it was sort of stalking us. I've never been so scared in all my life. I was petrified out there. I mean, it was, I was cold. You know, most people think that, you know, all, how could she see this, this, this cat, you know, but it was a full moon evening. I didn't need to take a torch down. I could see clearly, and I, I know what I saw, and I saw a big black cat, and I have never seen anything like it in my life. The following day, on the very farm where Jane had been walking, the remains of a sheep were found. The animal had been dragged across two fields. Jane believes it was killed by a cat, which also attacked her. I think it was the cat that, that knocked me out. I don't believe for one moment it could be a person. Why? There's no motive. I mean, if it'd been a poacher, Lucky would have barked and got her back up. Well, she never barked. So there's just no, there's no logical explanation for it, apart from the fact that, as I say, I, I think it was the cat that jumped out and caught me in, in its pathway. There have recently been dozens of sightings of big cats on or around Bodmin Moor. It's a wild and remote area. For a puma or a leopard, the mixture of farmland and high moors is an ideal hunting ground. And the plentiful livestock means there's a permanently well-stocked larder for a large predator. There have been many mysterious attacks on animals. Farmer Di Wilson believes her pony may have had a narrow escape. After three members of her family had seen a big cat on their land, she found the pony with an extraordinary injury. He had a large injury on his neck and his hock on the same side. It was the second pony we'd seen with similar injuries, but this was the worst. He had um, four puncture wounds um, on the neck, um, and under that, a large chunk, <laughs> gone, really. Um, as you can see, you can put your hand in the injury now. For some people, the search for the so-called beast of Bodmin Moor has become all-consuming. Many of the sightings have been on this farm, belonging to Rosemary Roads. Rabbit just squealed in that gully. That's what I thought, Dom. She now spends much of her time scanning the fields, trying to capture on video the animal which uses her farm as a fast food takeaway. Rosemary's lost many animals to what she believes is a puma. Now she's intent on proving it's there. It, it just takes up all your time. You, you become obsessed. You come out and you look. You don't go, never go through a gate without looking for footprints. And when we're out in the fields, we're generally scanning the hedges. It's obsessional because you're just desperate to prove it's there. I kept taking sheep along for, for post-mortems and saying, hey, look at these wounds. What could have done this? And they kept saying it was dogs or whatever and I knew it wasn't and I was I just wanted to prove it proof appeared to come when the Sun newspaper published a photo billed as the beast of Bodmin Moor it seemed to show a large cat half the size of a cow with another smaller cat possibly a cub we sought the help of a world authority on big cats the keeper of London Zoo's collection to comment on the Sun photo Douglas Richardson believes there are big cats wild in Britain but wasn't impressed by the sun's picture. Those were two domestic cats sitting on a rather low stone wall with a calf in the foreground. If you make the assumption that the calf is indeed an adult bull, then everything might come into scale. But then if you actually look at the silhouettes of the cats on the wall, they're completely wrong for any of the big cats. They are indeed domestic cats, absolutely. But you're not discounting the possibility that there is a big cat in that area? 
Oh, it's certainly conceivable that there is, yes. In an effort to get conclusive photos, the Sun took the imaginative step of hiring a tame puma from a local wildlife park. The idea was that as the photographers lay in wait, the beast of Bodmin Moor would be lured out of its cover by its caged cousin and onto the front page. But after a chilly three-day stakeout, the only companion promised the puma had to play with was a bit of old carpet. Just see if we can see it a bit more clearly. But the ferocious attacks on sheep were continuing. This one, belonging to Rosemary Rhodes, narrowly escaped having its throat torn out. Four puncture marks in its neck were the telltale signs of a big cat attack, not dogs. So I can't think what could have caused that. She hasn't got any other bites on her or the other else. She's seen no dogs else. going all over the place. Rosemary has lost half a dozen sheep, all killed in the same way by what she's convinced is a puma. The attacks are only circumstantial evidence for the existence of a big cat. However, this video, shot by Rosemary, provides the first dramatic evidence to back up her claims. I don't know what it is. It looks very big to me. Could be Thomas Thomas. I'm going to fade out. Oh, my goodness me, it is a biggie. Fade out now. It's coming out again. It starts as a black blob in the distance, but as the camera zooms in, the animal seems unusually shaped and very large. I don't know what it is. In relation to the vegetation, the animal seems exceptionally big. Judging the scale is difficult, but the tractor marks are four and a half feet apart. At first, though, Rosemary thinks it's her cat. It's Tom Tom. It's a swine. But when Rosemary looked again at what she captured on video, she was astounded. The animal was cat-like, but different from a domestic one, and seemed far too big. We didn't know what it was. I, I'd only bought the, the video camera that morning, and, uh, and I was just playing with it. And we saw it coming down the field beside the gully, and I thought, no, that, that is a big one. And then when it went across uh, uh, some tracks that a tractor had made earlier in the day, in the grass, then we realised how, how long it was. And that was how long? About four foot, I would say. We showed the video to London Zoo's big cat expert, Douglas Richardson. He looks into many reports of unusual sightings, most of which turn out to be dogs. But he believes the video shows a large feline, not a domestic cat. I mean, the body shape, the, um, the scale of the length of the tail to the body, I mean, it, it all, it looks very good. Um, obviously, the color of the animal would correspond with a black leopard. The way it's moving, I mean, everything about it certainly gives very strong indications towards this animal being a black leopard. The only problem that I have is just the scale, um, the comparisons, the uh, objects that it's walking past, just to get some idea of size. It's very, very interesting footage. Very interesting. Does it look distinctly different to what you would expect of a domestic cat, even a feral one? I mean, the, the, the strongest one for that is really the, the length of the tail as compared to the length of the body. And domestic cat tails usually have a lot more of a sort of stumpier appearance um, than, than, than this particular tail does. And so that's the, the real strong one for me. It, it's certainly something to be going on with. It's absolutely not a dog, that's for sure. And I, I tend to think it is not a domestic cat. You know, I'd be able to, I'd be willing to put a fiver on it that it's a leopard. Mark Chandler looks after the big cats at Dartmoor Wildlife Park at Sparkwell. It was his puma promise that was used to try to flush out the beast of Bodmin. Mark too has seen the video and also thinks it's a big cat, but a puma, not a leopard. I think it's a female puma, not a male, because it, it's not very stocky, it's more promises build. And um, also, the size of the cat, you get a good comparison, as in Rosemary's video, she has those tractor marks running through the field. Now, uh, it takes a, quite a large cat to fill the gap between the two front wheels or the two rear wheels of a tractor. So uh, I'm 100% I'm sort of sure that that's a puma. Also sure there's a puma on the moor at Devon and Cornwall Police. Dog handler, PC Peter Keane, went to Rosemary's farm when the sun photo appeared. He'd seen big cats in the area twice before, so what followed wasn't all that surprising. Whilst walking across the fields, I in fact saw um, what I know to be a puma myself in that gully uh, just the other side of the second hedge, making its way 
slowly across towards the tree. It was completely unhurried, didn't appear to be panicked, despite the fact there was a tractor working in the field and despite the fact that two men were shooting in the gorsed area beyond the gully. We've had other uh, sightings reported to us, including uh, two by very what I would describe as very good witnesses, one of whom was a police officer who saw a very large cat-like creature in front of her car for quite a few seconds one night whilst driving home. Farmer John Goodenough hasn't actually seen the cat, but he's convinced there's at least one on the moor. The threat to his animals is a constant worry for him. Two calves have been killed, much too big for any native predator, and the neighbouring farmer lost a dozen sheep. It's difficult to prove they were taken by a cat, but they didn't look like the dog kills with which farmers are familiar. The dogs are generally, generally hunting in pairs or packs, like, you know, and they round sheep up in a corner of a field or round them up in the field and nip in and tear one here, tear one there, you know, just for mischief. And when they finish their mischief, they'll have a bellyful. Uh, so uh, these things, they, they kill and then they, they take what they want and that's that. They only kill for, for free food, you know. They only, when they're hungry, they kill. They won't kill for fun. So that's the difference. The way the animals were being killed was so unusual that Good Enough's videoed the carcass of one calf. What's extraordinary is how much had gone, according to Robert Good Enough. As you can see, you know, the only thing that's left there is a pelt, the leg, the end of the legs, the, and the skull, and the ears are practically gone. They've been licked away, and all the coat has been licked. And the only remains is the pelt and the end bones. You know, that was a clean kill. There was no mess out around. With, with a dog, you get bits and that out around and the, the, the wool and whatever. So they'd be pulling from all directions, but a cat would just go in and kill instantly. Put it on the lawn, dear. Right. The latest sheep to die was kept by the good enoughs as evidence. The carcass was covered by unusual scratch marks. We found this uh, mangled up carcass, and we found one that was pretty badly mauled, and six others that were mauled. We had the police there, and, he, and he'd been to a lot of sheep worrying incidents and he said this is no dog job this is no dog job well we knew that so you've got a claw mark there and then down through there and there and over here so it's obviously a, a cat scratching at its neck the yeah. dog wouldn't do that no. no these pictures were sent to london zoo who confirmed that the scratches were made by an animal with razor-sharp claws, almost certainly a big cat. If you take it up nearer to the head now, you see, I mean, that isn't teeth marks, that's just claw that marks. One might be. You see? Cats, such as this puma, also have a way of cleaning flesh off a carcass with their rasping tongues. Several farmers around the moor have described how the ears appear to have been rasped off their dead animals and how the bones have been left extraordinarily clean. Dogs and cats often work in the same way when they're stripping a, a carcass. But yes, the, the, some of the kills I've seen, have, the bones have been stripped very, very clean, um, but very unusually, and, and could easily be a large cat at work. It's not certain that all the animals killed on Bodmin Moor have been attacked by a cat, but the evidence points that way. 10,000 sheep, though, are killed every year by dogs, and it's important not to create a myth of a ravenous beast killing all in its path. Ten years ago, just such a myth grew up in North Devon when the notorious Beast of Exmoor hit the headlines. Much like Bodmin Moor, Exmoor provides good cover, and for years there had been rumours of big cats living in the wild. In 1983, there was a sudden outbreak of ferocious sheep killings. Eighty died in three months, and the beast of Exmoor had a price on its head. The marines were brought in to kill what was thought to be a huge black cat, but they withdrew without firing a shot at it. However, reports of big cats in the area continued. Naturalist Trevor Beer has been logging all the sightings. Sheep continue to be killed, though many fewer, and it's thought the cats survive mainly on smaller prey. 
the cats that we've been watching over the years and up to the present time uh, have been killing mainly rabbits, small mammals, uh, some birds and uh, animals up to the size of deer, uh, pheasants. Really, they're, they're feeding off wild game. Five years ago, Trevor took this picture of a black cat on Exmoor. Another picture of a similar animal was taken in West Cornwall. He believes there are many animals and several species on the loose. We've had literally hundreds upon hundreds of sightings reported to us right up until today on cats on Exmoor, Dartmoor and other parts of British Isles. Uh, that's why, of course, we, we're looking at the British situation now rather than just an Exmoor beast. Um, this is a British situation which is, from a naturalist point of view, very interesting. What do you think those cats are? There are pumas, without doubt. Uh, there are the black big cats, which I claim are black leopards or the panther. Uh, we've seen those with cubs and sub-adults moving in the countryside in this past year. Uh, there are definitely jungle cats. That's indisputable. One jungle cat was found dead near Ludlow in Shropshire and another was run over on Hailing Island in Hampshire. This leopard cat was shot by a farmer at Widdicombe in Devon in 1988. And this footage of a very large black cat was shot by an amateur cameraman in Worcestershire last year. The animal has an unusually long tail and appears to be hunting. A crow flying through the trees gives some idea of the animal's size. Wildlife experts have positively identified it as a black panther. The animals seem to be extraordinarily widespread. Sally Broadley is one of half a dozen people in East Devon who've seen what, by all accounts, is a black panther. It was in her garden for ten minutes one morning last year and completely terrified her large alsatian that went out to investigate. It was slightly longer than my dog, which is probably about four foot. It had a very small head, very tiny ears. The head didn't look as if it matched the body and a very long, sleek tail quite a muscular sort of an animal. Colour? Black. Completely black, as far as I could see, just black. It's not certain how the animals got into the wild. It seems likely that some escaped from zoos and private collections, and more worryingly, it's almost certain that others were deliberately released. Big cats used to be fashionable and easy to buy. Nearly 20 years ago, this butcher from North Devon had a puma to guard his shop in Ilfracombe. And at nearby Barnstable, another man used to regularly walk a puma through the streets of the town like a dog. The government became worried at the surprising number of people who were keeping potentially dangerous animals as pets without much control or secure fencing. In 1976, the Dangerous Wild Animals Act was introduced. It became an offence to own certain species without an expensive licence and approved caging. In 1982, Mark Garrett, a scrap dealer from Cornwall who owned two lion cubs, was prosecuted. He was fined for not having a licence for his lions and gave them to a zoo. But he says others with big cats may not have been so scrupulous. If you get caught with one of these animals, obviously there's heavy penalties, heavy fines. Um, and if somebody had brought the animal up from a cub, um, rather than have the animal put down, if anybody gets whisper of it, it's easier to let it go. And whether it's the right thing to do or not, obviously because it's um, obviously they're going to feed off farmers' animals. Um, whether it's the right thing to do, that's up to the individual. But um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. Do you know of any instances where any have been released? Uh, hearsay. Allegedly, there has been one or two um, that has been let go in the last sort of five years, anyway. What kind of animals? I think that was a puma and possibly a panther. Amazingly, despite the Dangerous Wild Animals Act, there's evidence that people are still keeping big cats illegally and releasing them. The evidence came in a bizarre telephone call to Paynton Police Station at five o'clock one Sunday morning. Hello, control room, Sergeant Chapman. The duty controller was astonished when a man came on claiming to have released a puma on the outskirts of Devon's leading resort. What he actually is, is I, had a, I had a large cat in my custody, yeah? Large cat? Yeah, actually it was a puma, yeah? Yeah. 
and I've released it here, mate. Yeah? I've released it into... In Torquay. I'm not saying exactly where, but I've released it. Oh, I basically, I had it... I had it off a friend for a while, and basically I just... I couldn't control it any longer, and I couldn't afford to feed it, so I let it go. What colour is it? It's a black one. Oh, I see. And which area is it being? I can't say, just because I don't really want you to catch it, because I don't believe that a beautiful beast like it deserves to die. The police are still looking for the anonymous caller who they're taking very seriously. And the experience the following day of a taxi driver suggests they're right to. Tina Sherlock was driving a group of school children home near Newton Abbott when she got the shock of her life. Well, I was driving down this lane and one of the children really shouted really loud and said, Tina, Tina, a tiger. And um, I saw this very sort of slim but muscly black cat type animal. It looked very silky, short hair, with a longish tail. And it like looked at us for a second and jumped over the other side of the hedge. And so what I did then was I drove up to Newton Abbott Police Station. And to be honest, I thought he might have thought I was a bit of a nutter. But um, it just so happened that he said some gentleman had phoned up in that morning, or the morning before, and said that they'd let one go. There are now almost weekly sightings, strange black cats, be they pumas or panthers. There is apparently still a problem with people buying and freeing dangerous big cats. When Mark Garrett bought his two lions ten years ago, he didn't have a license. And he says it's just as easy to buy them illegally today. They can still be got, there's no question about it. Um, it'll most be a, phone, a few phone calls, inquiries you know, maybe a week or more, make sure there's some cubs or something around that um, either a big wildlife park has got or somebody wants to get rid of a zoo, circus, etc. They can be got, yes. Without a licence? Without a licence, yeah. So you, if you know the right people, you can get hold of them? The right people, the right phone calls and a bit of cash, yes, you could definitely get them. There are now calls for the law to be tightened to stop people buying big cats as pets. At the moment, there's no obligation on anyone selling a dangerous wild animal to check that the buyer has a licence. I think there is a bit of a loophole, yes, that a dealer, if he so wished, could sell the animal to, to anyone, and it's up to you as an individual to hold the licence before you buy the animal. Now, that shouldn't really happen. As I said, the only roles for these animals is in zoos and wildlife centres as part of rare breeding and international breeding programmes and not in private hands through dealers, um, just as pets. But changing the law won't do anything to solve the problem of the animals that are already free and undoubtedly seem to be stalking the moors. No one's sure how much of a danger they are to humans, but they certainly seem to have killed a lot of livestock. Jamaica Inn on Bodmin Moor is a legendary place, and now the hill farmers who regularly meet there have a new and worrying legend to talk about. Those who've lost animals like Jason Kendall want to see the cats shot. Is it sufficiently worrying to, to think that you need to you need to shoot it? Well, I don't know. I mean, mainly to prove to people that it is there. Well, it is a threat to livestock and farm animals. <coughs> And ponies, uh, yeah. So yeah, I've ponies have been lost out on the moors That's closer right. as well. Yeah. Well, the trouble is, they think we all die. Yeah, they yeah. Think a all lot of people, I mean, they just think you're telling the tale. Yeah. All they think we're getting fed up when we talk about the, the savage beast of Olvenza, you know. Oh, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a puma, we know it is. And, you know, that's it, it's killing our livestock, we want to get rid of it. But we're not saying it's this bloody monster, you know. This I mean, you don't necessarily have to kill it, you could tranquilise it if you had yeah. the right, you know, but stop it from killing the livestock. Yeah. I mean, there's our living. But to shoot a puma that's gone wild is easier said than done. Unlike this tame one, pumas are generally very wary of humans. It would require a lot of time, effort and luck to kill even one animal, and police think it would be a mistake to try. I don't believe that by shooting or trapping just one animal that any problems that may be there are going to be solved because there are a number, not only in this area, but countrywide, I think there are quite a few out there living quite happily and quite healthily and, in fact, breeding. Experience from America suggests, though, there may be a need to do something about the cats released into the wild. While shooting a documentary, the filmmakers discovered just how dangerous pumas can be. Yep. Looks like she's going to charge. Thank you.
The formerly tame puma was being rehabilitated into the natural environment. It had gone wild, but not regained its natural fear of humans. Attacks on humans in America are rare. Eight people have been killed this century. But the fear is that semi-wild big cats in Britain could be a greater threat. And some experts believe an attempt should be made to recapture the animals. All it takes is for one person to get attacked and severely injured or killed, and um, you know, then there will be an uproar. I think there probably should be some efforts to, uh, to capture them. But I, I think the risk is, is very, very low. How would you go about doing that, would you say? Well, I mean, you're looking at, you know, sort of uh, trapping animals, possibly laying drugged carcasses, uh, but then that's not going to be, you know, you can affect other animals with that. I mean, it's a very difficult prospect. Um, I would think probably the best way to go about it is to bring in dogs that are used to tracking um, animals, like some of the uh, breeds of hunting dog that they use in the United States for tracking puma. Mark Chandler from the Dartmoor Wildlife Park disagrees. He believes that any cats in the wild are no more of a threat to humans than his own tame puma promise is to him. In America, pumas are known as the grey ghost because they're so rarely seen. Mark says they'll leave us alone and we should do the same. They should be left alone. Um, my, my hope and my ambition is they can prove they're there because at the moment you can't get any sort of protection at an animal that doesn't exist. So if we can prove to the local authorities that they're there and then we can get a very large group of people together and hopefully get some sort of protection order put on the animal. I'd like to see them recognised as, as a, a species that is slowly but surely growing in Britain. They're just a lovely animal. Not so lovely to the moor farmers who are concerned that big cats are killing their livestock. And not lovely either to the woman who says she was attacked at midnight by a big black cat while walking her dog on the moor. Police and animal experts now accept that pumas, panthers and other cats are living wild and probably breeding. Unless we act soon, for the first time in centuries, predators more powerful than ourselves... They're not sure what kind. Rumours that a strange creature stalks Bodmin Moor in Cornwall have been around for some time. The news round, Phil Fairclough reports. Recently, a lot of farm animals around Bodmin Moor, a wild and hilly area, have been attacked and some killed. At about the same time, Rosemary Rhodes had seen a huge black cat on her farm. She bought a video camera and within two hours had captured something very unusual. We saw it coming down the field beside the gully and I thought, no, that, that is a big one. And then when it went across uh, uh, some tracks that a tractor had made earlier in the day, in the grass, then we realised how, how long it was. At first, she thought it might be her farm cat, but later estimated the mysterious animal was more than a metre long. Her video was examined by Douglas Richardson, an expert on big cats at London Zoo. He believes the pictures show what could be a black leopard, normally found in Africa or Asia, not a domestic cat. I mean, everything about it certainly gives very strong indications towards this animal being a black leopard. I mean, the, the, the strongest one for that is really the, the length of the tail as compared to the length of the body. And domestic cat tails usually have a lot more of a sort of stumpier appearance um, than, than, than this particular tail does. The police now believe there's at least one big cat on the moor. It's thought they escaped from private collections. PC Peter Keane says he saw one on Rosemary's farm too. Whilst walking across the fields, I in fact saw um, what I know to be a puma myself in that gully. Experts say that whatever the animals are, they're probably more frightened of us than we are of them. This is Phil Fairclough for Newsround on Bodmin. Wildlife experts say the animal which has been sighted several times in recent years is probably a leopard or a puma. Recently, scores of farm animals, mainly sheep, have been killed around Bodmin Moor in a way farmers say couldn't have been dogs. At about the same time, Rosemary Rhodes and others had seen a huge black cat. Within two hours of buying a video camera, she'd captured something very unusual. We saw it coming down the field beside the gully, and I thought, no, that, that is a big one. And then when it went across uh, uh, some tracks that a tractor had made earlier in the day, in the grass, then we realised how, how long it was. 
At first, she thought it might be her farm cat, but then estimated it to be four feet long. Her video was analysed by the keeper of the big cat collection at London Zoo. He believes the pictures show a very large feline, possibly a black leopard, not a domestic cat. I mean, everything about it certainly gives very strong indications towards this animal being a black leopard. I mean, the, the, the strongest one for that is really the, the length of the tail as compared to the length of the body. And domestic cat tails usually have a lot more of a sort of stumpier appearance um, than, than, than this particular tail does. The sightings coincide with the story of Jane Fuller, who says she was attacked by a big black cat while walking her dog Lucky one night. She was struck from behind, and when she came round, saw the animal in the moonlight. I looked up, and on the embankment was a huge black cat, and it had a long tail, and uh, it was sort of stalking us. Whether this is it or not, local police now accept there's at least one big... ...was found dragged up a tree. But there's been a sceptical response to newspaper pictures claiming to show the so-called beast. Pictures purporting to be of a big black cat were published in today's Sun newspaper and the Western Morning News. They appear to show an animal standing on the edge of a pool of rainwater. The pictures were taken by Keith Farmer, an electrician from Fenton Pitts near Bodmin. He says he took two photographs of the animal as it stood apparently motionless by the pool in a field about 100 yards from his home. He denies it's a hoax. Perhaps there will be a few people that won't believe me, but uh, that's up to them. You're not the sort of person who would hoax people? Oh, absolutely not, no. And I expect there's people all over Cornwall laughing now. <laughs> because, I mean, a, lot, a photograph like that, of a good photograph, could make a lot of money, couldn't it? Probably, yeah, but... Uh, well, will it? But having thoroughly examined the pictures, one wildlife expert was distinctly sceptical. I'm quite happy to believe there are big cats out there, but I've yet to see a good photograph of one. Are you suggesting that this photograph is, in fact, a fake? Your guess, I think, is as good as mine, but if it is, it's a good fake. Police are investigating all possible sightings, including Mr. Farmer's. Whether the pictures are genuine or not, evidence continues to grow for the presence of at least one big cat on Bodmin Moor. In December, BBC Southwest screened exclusive footage of a large cat filmed on the moor. It was identified by an expert at London Zoo as almost certainly a black panther. There have also been a series of ferocious attacks on livestock around the moor, and today the headless carcass of a turkey was found up a tree near Bodmin. The heavy bird had been dragged over a fence and into the tree. PC Peter Keane, who's investigating all the incidents, believes this was the work of a big cat. This carcass of this turkey was apparently taken up a tree and then dropped, the blood and the feathers being in the tree, which I understand is very, very typical of the bigger cat type methods of consuming their prey. Uh, there's no other animal that could have done that. I mean, this is a sizable bird. Yes, I would say that this carcass must weigh between 15 and 20 pounds. And to my knowledge, there's no species of animal indigenous to this country that in fact would consume its prey in that manner. The latest killing in which a turkey was found in these trees took place just a mile from where Jane Fuller says she was attacked by a big black cat while walking her dog in the middle of the night. Police are becoming concerned about the number of incidents and are now preparing contingency plans to tranquilise any big cats that they get close enough to. And a BBC Southwest special documentary on the beast will be repeated this Saturday at 7.